Would you like, um, in addition to the way you guys have been playing defensively of late, um, the mental fortitude shown in, um, you know, it's two nothing early yesterday, but come back and make it two one. Um, the, the responses, even even when the opponent takes takes the lead, that there seems to be, okay, just keep at just keep at it. Don't collapse like we saw at times last year. Yeah, I think we've done a good job overall with that. You know, I think um, there's a number of factors that play into that. Um, one is getting a big save to kind of keep you in it at times. And uh, two is timely scoring. We obviously had a timely goal at the end of the first last night, which I think uh, uh, helps um, keep you afloat, you know. But but I just think part of that, too, is is we're playing better hockey. So, you know, when you're down 2 nothing and you give up the third goal, it gets way harder. But if you're playing good hockey, the likelihood of giving up the third goal is way less, you know. So I think there's a mental fortitude uh, that's been that's been fairly good. Uh, I think part of that is um, you know mat maturation of, of guys that were with us a year ago and, and kind of some new faces that uh, are pretty calm and, and are able to uh, can, you know keep their head above water when things aren't going great. You know, so I think you know even answering the bell against Nashville after a really tough loss uh, in the first game uh, where you lose in the last minute. Um, you know, I think that showed a lot about what our guys are, are about and. You know, we keep coming to the rink and working hard and, and trying to get better here. I was going to follow up with that uh, with the new faces because I think it was uh, maybe the first game in Nashville where Stahl scored right after they had scored in the final minute of one of the periods. And, and last night it was uh, Vladislav scoring to make it 2-1 at the end of the first. That those are new faces that they don't have the baggage from last season, that, that that's kind of what they can help provide. They don't have the mentality of, oh, no, what's going to – no doubt. You know, I thought there was times last year when we got scored on, it felt like it was 10 or, or we lost the game. It felt like we had lost 100. And, uh, you know, I think, again, part of it's the maturation of some of our guys that are returning. And part of it certainly is the, the fresh faces of guys like uh, Stahl's been good at like that. Stetch is good that way. Merrill's good that way. Vladdy, like they just don't, they, they're not rattled by what really is just the normal course of a season and normal course of games. And so, you know, I think, uh, we recognized last night that we were playing good hockey when we were down two nothing. We we came out and played very good in the first, and we we're down two nothing. That's the way it goes some nights, but you got to stay with it. And I thought our guys did a good job of it. Uh, anything on Tyler? I uh, did not skate today. So um, you know, every day that he doesn't skate, I mean, he's been uh, I, he's been back and forth to skating and not skating. Um, so you no know, timeline specific, except that uh, he's not any closer today. Thank you. Next up, Ansar Khan, I'm live. Yeah, Jeff, uh, with a couple of exceptions, uh, notably the, uh, the games in Chicago and Dallas, uh, have you found the team has played better on the, uh, just the second game of these back-to-backs? I know the last three series you played well, the first game is uh, also, but uh, have you found like whether it's adjustments or just bearing down more that you've performed better in the second end of those back-to-backs? Yeah, I don't know that it's it's necessarily um, you know adjustments per se. I don't I don't know that it's. Uh, I think sometimes you know we've been on the short end of the stick. Like the first two series, we lost the first game, and and there, you know there's a part of human emotion that I think the team that loses has a little more um, to gain in, in the next game, and and so you might come back with a greater effort and. Um, I don't like using the word desperation, but with that urgency level and, and, you know, maybe that's the case. I don't know. I think since the second Tampa game, we've played pretty consistent every night. Um, I don't know that we've been better or worse on, on first or second nights. We've just been pretty consistent in our game and we've been in really, really tight games and we haven't won enough of them and we're still trying to find ways to win those tight games. And then uh, last night you'd mentioned that uh, uh, you were going to decide if there was a better way uh, to attack the power play uh, after the game, uh, just anything? Did anything come out of that? Did any uh, reach any conclusions or, or anything? Uh, we looked at some different units here today, so we'll see what we go with tomorrow. Um, you know, nothing, nothing specific that I'm necessarily going to share. Um, we certainly are looking at every uh, different uh, possibility. What do you look at? You look at uh, schematics. You look at uh, where players are. You look at who's on it. Are they in the right spots? Do, is there somebody that we're not getting enough out of? All those types of things. You know, I, I would say the other side of it is guys have to dig in and make more plays. So, um, but we're, we're certainly looking at all the different things and uh, we'll make decisions moving forward. Thanks.
Thank you. Next question from Max Boltman with The Athletic. Hey, Jeff. We, we've seen in, uh, I guess, recent years how tough it can be sometimes for European guys, free agents, uh, to come in their first year and, and make an impact right away with, you know, guys like Sulak or, or Kasky. I know different players and even different positions, but why is Matias stuck, you think? Why is he what? Sorry. Why is he kind of stuck? Like, you know, he, he didn't do the a, he didn't have to go to the HL. He just kind of immediately stuck in the lineup. Like, what do you think well, a lot of that? Stayed. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, well, first of all, Matias isn't a young player, you know, um, so there, there's he, he is kind of a matured player in terms of uh, not necessarily worried about making sure he has the, the, the proper amount of ice time to uh, grow his game. His game is, is going to be kind of what it is now. Can he, ex, can he excel further than what he's done so far? I think so from a production standpoint. Why is he playing? He's playing because, um, you know, I think he goes out and even without production has done a pretty good job of, uh, being reliable on a, on a shift to shift basis. He wins pucks. He doesn't give up a whole lot of chances. He's created chances. Um, you know, if I look at the year total for us from a chance for a chance against, he's on the plus side by a good margin, not a crazy margin, but a good margin. Um, doesn't play a ton, uh, but still goes out and is able to, 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 you know, win more shifts than he loses. Uh, so I think he still has positive impact on the game. At some point, do those chances need to uh, produce points? Yes, they do. Um, but one of the things I think as a coach that you have to do is, is you have to follow process. And if the, if the process looks good, you got to stick with it, uh, even when um, others think you shouldn't because of the fact that um, you believe the process, you believe in the player, and, and in time, hopefully he produces. And I believe he will if he continues to play the way he's playing. So um, to answer the question in total, I'd say he's a mature player. He, play, he plays a mature game. And um, he's been a solid player for us with or without uh, producing points. Thanks. Yep. Next question from Ted Colton with the Detroit News. Hey, Jeff. Are we seeing glimpses here of why you guys got juice? I mean, he seems like when the puck's on his stick, there's potential there for something good to happen. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Juice is, is a unique player for our team. Um, we don't have a lot of guys like him. We, we've, we've got some uh, big guys that are, you know, defenders. We've got even little guy in stature that's a defender. Bulldog's more of a defender. And Juice is more of a, you know, a savvy offensive uh, puck poise guy who moves the puck well. And so, you know, he definitely brings a different dimension to our team. Ultimately, um, you know, ultimately I want him to, uh, run a good power play, not just run a power play. And obviously our power play has been bad, but I think he's got the, the ability to do that. Um, so we'll see. Um, but, but I do think he's, he's definitely uh, been a positive player for us here, especially as of late. You can use the Mexican anywhere in the lineup, but do you prefer him probably at center more than anywhere else? Uh, you know, I've liked him at center. I don't, I don't know that it's over the wing, but I have liked him at center. I think he seems to, be more dynamic as a skater at center and um, you know he's showing more quickness and more speed at center than he did on the wing for sure so I've liked him there I think he, he supports the puck well uh, in our zone I think he defends pretty well and, um, and and again I think he shows a little bit more speed up the middle. I mean he's kind of a lot of people think of him more maybe more as a defensive guy but the guy has scored goals in the league I mean he's uh, obviously there is offense there too. Well, there's no doubt. You know, he's a first rounder for a reason, and and uh, the, you know he's got a good offensive game. Um, what he's done is he's he's learned how to be a really good defensive player, and, and that's mm -hmm. um, you know kept him in a spot where he's going to earn lots of minutes because of that. He's a useful player in a lot of different situations. Uh, cares a ton. Um, so, um, you know, I, I like I, I like Vladi. I think uh, I think he's played better as of late, and part of that's probably because he's at the center position. Sounds good. That's all I need. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Next up, Art Regner, DetroitRedWings.com. Hi, Jeff. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Philip Zadina. Um, even though it hasn't translated lately on the score sheet for him, because I, I know he wants to get a point at least every game, though, his game really seems to have matured. Is that, is that a fair assessment? He seems to put himself in really good positions now. Yeah, I think where he's matured is he's matured offensively. I, I actually think he's been a fairly complete player from, from day one in terms of – he's not perfect, but in terms of, you know, his defensive positioning, he, he, he never really cheated a whole bunch. I think he's really learned to, to battle for pucks. Um, so he has the puck on a stick more. 
I think he's really matured and grown in confidence so that he's in way more offensive situations. He's attacking the game more. Um, he's more of a give and go player and trying to, instead of trying to do everything on his own uh, to get to those scoring areas, he's way more of a give and go player. And that's where I think there's been a maturation process for sure. Um, you know, I think, uh, um, I think Brandon Narado and, and our uh, development team has done a really good job with him. They've worked hard with him, Sean Horkoff. Um, so they, they've done a really good job with him. And I think, um, you know, he's grown into a, into a good player. I, when I, mature too is that even though the puck hasn't been going in the net, that he doesn't seem to be getting frustrated or down on himself, that he really does seem to have a good level of, I don't know if it's confidence or an understanding of what it takes to be an NHL player. Well, I think he is going out the next shift and, and not letting, uh, you know, any frustration that he feels uh, wear to the next shift. And I do think, you know, he does get frustrated because he is a competitive person who wants to, to do well. And I think he expects to score in every shot he takes. And, and that's just not the reality. But I do think he's doing a good job of, of then not wearing that frustration to the next shift and, and just kind of moving on to the next shift. Uh, Jeff, this is more of a cultural question for you than, than a hockey one. Um, I know, you know, born in Detroit, raised in the UP, outstanding goaltender, academic All-American at Ferris, coached the Griffins, coached at Western, Red Wings coach. You're about as Michigan as anybody on this, on this uh, Zoom call. Will you have a Poonski today? Uh, no, I won't. And, and honestly, uh, was never a big part of my life growing up. So unfortunately, uh, no, I won't. Um, I will go home and shovel though. So I, I've learned to do that over my lifetime very well, uh, growing up in the Sioux. And so I, I'm accustomed to that part of it. Have you ever it. eaten a punchki before? Never, not once. No, ne never. It must be really more of a Southeastern Michigan, Detroit thing, I would guess. I've eaten a past the art, but uh, not a... <laughs> Well, maybe you should stop off at the bakery on the drive home and give it a chance. Two weeks on the road, I've eaten uh, too much. I don't need that at all. So. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you. it. That's it for us today. Thanks, everyone.